please. Hands up. Awesome, awesome. That's pretty good right now. But when I first entered this world of blockchain a year and a half ago, I did not see many women. To be honest, I felt pretty intimidated. I thought this whole space was super techie. I don't know what on earth I'm going to do here, but I wanted to be a part of the future. And so I acquainted myself with other women just like myself. And today I own a charity on the metaverse and I'm creating a mental health hub independently on my own on the metaverse. The reason why I'm telling you all of this is because our next panel are shining examples of other women for you to see to believe any woman here who feels the same way as I did a year and a half ago that you can totally come into this space, not just come in it, but you can totally dominate this space. And now, over to Sherwin to introduce these wonderful women. Hello, good morning, everyone. What an exciting event we are at. I mean, of course, we're all interested in what blockchain has in store for all of us, especially nowadays, how we can adopt it faster, and also what it has in store for our future. So I also wanted to welcome my fellow panel mates, uh, Kate Hancock, Chesco Gonzalez, Tara Kwan, and of course, Gail Makapagal. So I just wanted to see a show of hands on how many women we have here right now. Ah. So I see that we have a lot of women, but I feel like in the coming years, we can still increase that number. So it's going to be a very exciting panel discussion that we'll have now. I think I was just having a chat earlier, and I think here in the Philippines, we actually have a really good statistic on women and men that are involved in the blockchain. So I'm just curious for you guys, what is the metaverse for all of you? Oh, so to simplify, the metaverse is, it's you in the internet in a form of avatar. Let's give you a little bit of perspective. Web 1.0 is your old and boring website. For example, I mean, philippineblockchainweek.com is not boring, but that's just an example. Web 2.0, this is your LinkedIn, this is your Facebook, there's some social component to it. And Web 3.0, or the metaverse, it's way immersive. So it's the next generation of the internet. In st it's the internet on steroids. So that is the Web 1.0, Web 2.0, Web 3.0, 101, right? So what's the difference between Web 2.0 and Web 3.0 when it comes to the future of e-commerce. Web 2.0 is your Lazada or Shopee where you click everything in your cart, Lazada will ship it to your home. Web 3.0, so any store, for example, Nike, you walk into the store, because Nike can recreate their own store in a 3D world. You shop in there, you'll see a different collection of shoes, and a customer service in a form of avatar will tell you the different history of the shoe. And in one click, using your digital wallet, you can buy a shoe, and Nike can ship it to your home. So is that very clear? That's the difference of Web 2.0 and Web 3.0. It's way immersive in a 3D form. Do you, and uh, so we understand that Web3 has an infinite possibility for literally any industry, but I'm interested to know, how, and I'd like you, Cheska, to answer this or anyone who wants to, about the opportunities for women in this space. About the opportunities, I believe that it is endless and the possibilities are endless simply because Having this, that's why I thought of and pushed yes. for Philippine Blockchain Week because I believe that, you know, we women especially, um, we need to be, you know, um, in front and inspire other yes. people to be in this space. And having 
someone like us starting this would actually give uh, people more chances and having this uh, Philippine Blockchain Week will give more jobs to more Filipinos, not just women, to a lot of Filipinos and to a lot of even foreigners here. So I believe that there's endless possibilities. Yeah, so another great what women can do in the metaverse, right? We can be a business advisor. That's something that I was been doing. We are so creative. If you're such a great artist and can do a 3D like art, that's something that's needed. And think about it. It it is already there. Whether whether we 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 recognize it or not, Roblox is a, a big example of the metaverse. Your kids been playing it for years and years. And so think about that. Kids, not only women, little kids can be can can thrive and win in the metaverse. Yeah, maybe I can add some on top of that. Because, uh, you know, some people might think that, like, oh, women issues, you know, like, why we have to talk about just women, you know, like, yeah. And then what I thought is, like, it's not about just women. Yeah, it's more about the people who are interested in equality or, like, a whole the different type of opportunity, you know, which can happen in metaverse. And then, like, I mean, let me recap though, what metaverse is, you know, from my perspective, because um, cause metaverse is expression of reality we are living right now. So... It's not like it's just a virtual world or like all the tech savvy stuff, you know, even if you are not really like tech savvy, it doesn't have to be. It's just like your world became way bigger than now, meaning that of course it's not just for women. For everybody, we can have like a borderless experience, you know, like opportunity, you know, so just imagine, you know, like whatever you can do, then that can be the, your metaverse and then you still, the formation is not still like settled down, so I think all of us, you know, can put some kind of added value and then like a new concept of metaverse, you know, like whatever it is you can imagine. Obviously, there's a lot of opportunity in terms of creators, builders, coders, artists. Uh, overall, if you look metaverse or uh, virtual reality as well as augmented reality are the core pillars on how to uh, enhance the immersive experience of the technology. So now in terms of if you look at any of the existing metaverse uh, uh, statistic, around 30% of the, of the users are women and 30% of builders, traders, purchasers are women. That's significantly higher than if you look at, for example, Bitcoin itself or if you look at Binance trading volume. So why do we see there is a enhanced possibility for specifically women in, in metaverse. Uh, it comes from a metaverse utility for fashion, for example, metaverse for pets, degenerative metaverse that generative metaverse that immerses and extends not just virtual reality, but also augmenting the current space and environment where we are involved. So right now, uh, thinking about overall space of women in metaverse, if you check out uh, fashion metaverse statistics, most of the revenue comes from women. So I would say, obviously, we have a place as a builders, but we have also significant place as a consumers and revenue generators in the form of uh, interactive commerce and retail in me the metaverse itself. So while you have the mic, Ms. Vilma, actually Vilma Matelia is the founder of FIRE, which is a really big Web3 project. And I just wanted to actually hear also from you the experience that you had starting, starting in the Web3 space. Yes, yeah, so I have been in crypto now for the past eight years. Um, overall, why did we start it? FIRE, it comes from the uh, need of accessibility for everybody, not just for women, accessibility as well as sustainability perspective. So through accessibility, we definitely solve user friendliness and access for everybody to use, uh, use Web3 products and, and blockchain itself and build on it. Because as we all understand, 99% of us is not Solidity or, or uh, Rust coders. We cannot deploy at the code side. However, we should be able to use blockchain, uh, Web3 and Metaverse itself without being able to code. So right now, uh, 
for example, if I'm call, calling to you through, through uh, WhatsApp, I don't need to understand how voice technologies work. That's what our company solves, and that's what we expect to see further. Yeah, um, very nice, Vilma. So uh, there's a Grant Thornton study that, say, uh, that says that the women in, women in business or women in technology, is not, we're not where we want to be yet. But the Philippines is very lucky to have a huge percentage of women in technology and women in the space. So as the founder of Women in Blockchain, this is an open um, invitation to all the women out here to just please approach us. And if you want to be part of Women in Blockchain, we will give you the opportunity to be part of our group so that we can show the world that the women can still, that the women are a strong force in the metaverse. Thank you so much. So we've talked about the opportunities, we've talked about women's experiences, but with all of this going on, of course, there are still potential hurdles breaking into the space, trying to achieve what we all want to achieve in this male predominant industry. So would anyone like to take the, the Well, lead? this is a really timely question because I'm seeing a lot of VC friends in the audience. Um, as a founder myself, I've bootstrapped five different companies from seven figures to eight figures with no funding. The common hurdle, it's not just in tech, but we're not getting funding unless you're, you know, you know it's it still, it has that pecking order like it's who you know. And we need to change that because we could scale and build a unicorn if we are open to women because at the end of the day, we're a badass female. We I can agree. way more detailed and do things than <laughs> not trying to call out. Who man. agrees man. that women are badass here? Yes. Come on. We are badass and we Let's can hear do it. <laughs> way better than you think <laughs> we can. not But I think we really need to embrace really diversity when it comes to funding because that's the common issues when entering tech and in order for us to scale we need your support as as vcs and and everyone or even even if you're not a funding person just be a mentor to a lot of dreamer who's wanting to change the world and we're seeing that in this audience especially here in the philippines Right? We've seen one Filipinas who created a unicorn company from, from Australia, Canva. We can do more of that. But that really needs support from the government, VCs, and all of us elevating women. And what I love about this panel, are we're so diverse, we're Asia, Europe, and all over the place. So thank you. Amazing. This is my favorite question. Um, most of you don't know, I'm an airline pilot, so I've been a pilot for 10 years. I mean, I've been in the airline industry for five, 10 years, but I've been uh, still, the hurdle is still the same in this industry. 5%, there's only 5% of pilots in the world, women pilots in the world. And now here in the blockchain industry, there's also lesser, I don't know if it's 10%, but it's much, much lesser than the guys. So I think the hurdle here is people think that, you know, it, it's still, we're still in the era of thinking that we're not equal and it hurts. It really hurts because they think that it, uh, we're not equal. And I think people tend to think that tech, that you should be a tech person to be in this space. But honestly, I don't know anything about tech, but at the end of the day, you can learn anything. Yeah, this whole concept that you have to be a developer to enter the metaverse, that's so wrong. Because at the end of the day, if you're a de developer, you need to have a leader, you need to have a, uh, an advisor, or you can be a creative you know, COO of a tech company. You don't have to be a builder to enter the metaverse. That's incorrect. You can be a creative artist, so let's let's embrace that together. But I have to say though, Michelle, I'm actually very hopeful. I'm seeing a lot of women communities popping globally, joining the force of Web 3.0. So I think I hope that really inspire us all here from the Philippines. <laughs>
if I may really quickly, the only, for women out there, the only hurdle is yourself. If you do not go out, if you do not study, if you do not try to attend these expos, if you do not um, talk to like-minded people, then you won't be able to enter the world that we are all in right now. So girls, the hurdle is yourself. Get over that hurdle, be confident, seek for a mentor, and talk to other people, and you will be there. And hopefully, I would like to see that woman who is struggling inside herself and trying to, to think, I want to be a, the next panelist next year. The challenge is yours. Please overcome that hurdle. Thank you so much. While we're on the topic of inspiring individuals and women, I would like to hear about your individual projects and what you're doing in the spaces. Yeah, we can start with Ms. Tara. <laughs> uh, yeah, actually, I wanted to add a little more for the question before. Okay, Can yes. Because yeah. <laughs> in my case, you know, I just like wanted to back to the essence, you know, the core part of the question. Because um, maybe I'm not as like a skillful as like older girls, you know, like in this stage. Um, I'm not an inspiring uh, uh, rational speaker. But what I can say is like, uh, let's go back, you know, like what the metaverse is and then what um, we want, you know, like as a woman. Because, you know, like as I um, said, you know, like from the beginning, it's not about just women, and I'm not a feminist, you know, like I don't think women better than men, we are all equal. But somehow, people may misunderstand, you know, like metaverse, oh, I don't, I don't I'm not a gamer, or like I'm not really tech savvy, or I don't know about crypto. And then that's the thing, you know, because metaverse is like, you know, the reality that we are living right now is overlaid the, all the digital, like maybe benefits, you know, like we can enjoy maybe now and then later on as well. So I just want you guys, you know, start from the very sim uh, simple mindset. And then that's the point, you know, like we wanted to tell that, like, you know, the opportunity is even bigger because the expansion of the reality. And then at the same time, like uh, as a woman or as any other person, you know, like who might not be like uh, very specialized in that industry can find something there. So don't talk, just don't think it's just about the woman, you know, because all the girls are here, but we support everybody. And then just we want to be on the same stage with everybody in this metaverse world. And that's what we wanted to actually emphasize today. I completely agree. A round of applause, please. Projects? Yes. Yeah. Um, so I'm the content director of DynaQuest Technology Services, and our project is very simple yet very meaningful. We are targeting the 500,000 indigenous people of the Caraga region, region 13, to give them digital identity and digital economy. Remember, if you're an indigenous person born in the Philippines, you do not have access to any birth certificates. You do not have access to healthcare. You cannot vote. You are not counted as a citizen of the Philippines. So what we started two years ago before the pandemic struck is that we started gathering data to build their digital identity. And once you have your digital identity, we build a digital economy around this Caraga region. And once this project flies, we, Caraga is the model. We, we uh, mirror this to, to the entire Philippines. Just yesterday, I was at the Department of uh, Agrarian Reform and the Undersecretary for Mindanao was telling me that this project is very monumental and it can help the Philippines. So aside from mirroring it in the Philippines, our next goal is to do this in all, all other countries that have indigenous people. For example, um, Laos already uh, got in touch with us, Vietnam got in touch with us, a lot of other lo local government units like Bataan already is interested to develop the digital identity and digital economy of the indigenous person of the Philippines. Thank you. I think it's really important to always have purpose in everything we do without it, then we can't really move forward and achieve a certain goal. So I love it. I love what you're doing. Thank you so much. Yeah, for me, I'm actually involved in a project called Lore. So it's a bespoke metaverse. So we custom build your retail store in a metaverse in a hyper realism. And also, we're creating a project here in the Philippines. Um, it's in the angle of creator's economy. What does that mean? Anyone can earn with your own data and content. So it's not selective to influencers only. 
my local mom or grandma can make money. So that's the whole metaverse. It's for everyone. It's open for everyone to thrive and make a living. So I'm very excited about that, having 140 million population in the Philippines and we're on TikTok every day, 111. And um, in reality is, everyone spend at least the average three hours and 15 minutes a day using smartphones. So it's an exciting and the fact that every single one of us can, can earn with our talent, that, that's a good thing. It should be open to everyone, not just select celebrity or influencers. Yeah, and please, sorry, one more thing. Please indulge me one minute. Um, another project that we have is NFTs for a cause. We actually have this street children's shelter in Bogo City, Cebu, where there are 34 kids. I asked them to draw pictures of their everyday life and what they feel about life in general. We then minted that and created an NFT under the Likha PH um, uh, marketplace. Um, and then all the proceeds will go directly to their studies, to the shelter, to building a new dorm for the kids. 34 kids picked out of the streets, all are victims of sexual, um, drug abuse, and all the horrors that you can imagine. So if you can please um, go to the likha.ph website and click Humanility Empowered Children from Street to School NFTs. It would be very, um, it will go a long way and I will be very truly grateful. Uh, so I do tradings. Uh, firstly, I advise an uh, accelerator called Techstars. Techstars is a US-based accelerator focused worldwide in empowering um, smaller and medium uh, enterprises as well as incubating startups. Then secondly, I invest. For now, I have invested in around 80 companies and still looking to invest specifically here in Philippines and, and as well as in Indonesia. So happy to hear about, uh, about your projects. And thirdly, I run a layer one called FIRE. So we work with Fortune 500s and enterprises in terms of digital identity as well as data transparency and data storage. So my project is uh, called Women of Substance NFT, and it's um, the real reason why I started this is because I've been a scholar all my life. Even my Airbus scholar, uh, even my Airbus rating is a scholarship, and I believe that it changes lives. Giving a scholarship to somebody or an opportunity to anybody, especially the kids who can't access school, will you know change their lives and. Um, some of our beneficiaries are actually here, like Fund Life, Girls Got This, Dugon PH, and other charities that uh, we will be helping. Because of Philippine, and also this Philippine Blockchain Week, I, this is a passion project of mine, and I thank, thankful, I'm so thankful for all my other conveners, who, especially Donald Lim, who actually believed in me. And yeah, here we are now. And I'm thankful for this project. So I hope to continue. We hope to continue this every year to give jobs to more Filipinos. Yeah. So. Okay. Actually, I'm not going to talk about my project. <laughs> yeah, I just want to say, you know, there are not that many people from the branding and marketing uh, side actually in this Web3 scene. Because as you guys may know, like all, all about like a tech savvy, like developers or maybe the finance people, you know, from the investor side. So that's why, you know, like I myself is not super expert on crypto or finance, but I wanted to put, you know, different, you know, added, uh, different part of added value to this scene as a marketer and then as a brand strategist. And then that's why, you know, we can understand what consumer wants. And then maybe like a two out of 100, you know, like big the functions or or maybe benefits you know like web3 can bring over but there are like a two to five a very small part of the click point you know which can uh, which we can engage with the customers so i'm trying to find the part and that's why i want to listen to you guys and then i want to be the bridge actually and then that's what maybe my project you know can explain as well so yeah i want to have like more chances to engage with everybody and then what you think about the web3 and then you know let's maybe expand the world together a big round of applause for all of our wonderful women here, please. As you can see, we have amazing women that are doing 
amazing things in their respective fields. We have CSR for purpose, we have for creators, tech entrepreneurs, for inspiration. And I think that's absolutely amazing because it really sees that I it really shows us the diversity that we're able to do. But of course, it's not just limited for women, it's also open to men, of course. <laughs> But while we are talking about women of substance, I would like to see if there are any women here that might have a potential question. We have room for maybe just one. Question. Any question? Questions? None? Last chance? Okay, we have one here. Do you want to come up on? I'll go to you. Hello, hello, beautiful. What's your name? Hi, I'm Claire. I'm with the Zen Crypto team. Uh, I would love to just uh, make this an open question for any of you. Um, what are your thoughts on onboarding the 96% of people uh, in the world who aren't in crypto, but in the Philippines? Like, what, what are your, oh, you. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> uh, what are your strategies for onboarding like the 96% of the world who aren't in crypto um, especially in the Philippines or in Southeast Asia, um, what are what are your um, your actionable tactics in in getting people and onboarding people? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Um, this is the problem, right? We're seeing 0.001% really understand the metaverse, and we have a long ways to go. So, me personally, I, I actually have I created a community and social audio app. Clubhouse with 113,000 entrepreneurs globally and what we're doing is inter interviewing thought leaders about the metaverse they can talk about uh, everything you know but the problem is in a web 3.0 space we're using a lot of jargon that's hard for every I mean a regular person can comprehend right so we really have to to share it in, in, in a manner where everyone can can observe it and it's easier to understand but I think as, as a community if you're a community leader keep on creating a community talk uh, maybe a, a little bit of a meet up here and there because it, it requires a massive amount of work from all of us to really you know, to spread a mass adaption to happen. And at the end of the day, we're so early, I get a chance to interview the godmother of the metaverse, Kathy Hackel, and I asked her this question, when do you think is this gonna be fully developed when it's really as immersive as I describe the e-commerce, right? She said, we're actually about seven to 10 years out. So we are here, it's up to us, well, how are we gonna utilize this emerging technology. Of course, the early adapter will get paid in, in high rewards, but as an entrepreneur, if you're doing a project, you have to understand that when you invest in an emerging technology, it's a risk, and you have to play very safely because look what happened now, right? I think it's the key word there is adoption, and the good news is this industry is being adopted faster than any other industry that came before. So the 96% will have a lot of opportunities in every space or industry that you're interested in. So thank you so much to our amazing panel. I think a photo op is in order, but yes. So thank you so much for listening to us, Women of Substance. See you next year.